Hi, this is Todd with Esoteric Car Care. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly inspect the car uh, in preparation for paint correction. Okay, paint correction. You're going to get a car in, you want to take a look at it and figure out what direction that you want to go with it. So this uh, video we're going to talk about the details of this car, uh, what kind of tools that we're going to use, what we're going to be looking for. Uh, as we get ready to go uh, hit it with a polisher. You can't just bring a car in and, and start polishing, particularly when you have a heavier level like that we're gonna be doing uh, here. What this level is gonna be is a restorative level uh, detail. Just how the name uh, indicates, we are going for restoration level uh, paint polishing on it. Speaking of the car, we have a classic 2001 E39 BMW M5 here. Absolutely uh, stunning car in its day. You're about 400 horsepower, manual transmission, uh, sedan. This thing was a badass, uh, and it still is. Uh, granted, today's cars are a lot more horsepower, but it's a very, very classic car, and it's great uh, that the customer is doing to it what he is. Just a quick history uh, about this car. Um, this one had sat outside uh, here uh, in the Columbus area three or four years uh, all the time. It's a little beat up. Then the current owner bought it, I guess you can say uh, rescued the vehicle, and is making some investments in it to bring it back to life. There's plenty more that we have to do to get this uh, car ready. So we want to take a look at it and figure out what's going to be the best way, what's going to be the safest way. Do we have any major concerns? Now I said we're going over this M5 here, but this is part of a mini series. We're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at a lot of different cars. Uh, so. We may have a Ferrari come in that we're planning on a one step. And we want to take a look at it for some certain kind of defects. Uh, we may have uh, a Honda come in that's brand new. We want to take a look at it. So we're going to spend some time going over a lot of details uh, of what you need to look for in these cars when you're getting ready to work on them. Now this car, it's already gone through our, our prep phase and it's been washed, it's been decontaminated. Uh, it's gone through chemical decontamination. It's gone through mechanical decontamination. And we've completely wiped down the car so there's nothing left from the body shop, no fillers, nothing on the surface whatsoever. And we know exactly what, what we're looking at. So before we go into some specifics of this car, I want to talk a little bit about some of the tools that we need uh, to use. First of all, you can't do anything without a good inspection light. This is just a simple Rupus um, LED light, fantastic for looking at it. We also have some uh, bigger LED lights. We've got our uh, fluorescence uh, in the shop, we've got outside. So you wanna take a, a look at it from a lot of different light sources to see what the defects are like. And then we also have our DOI meter. Uh, we've done extensive video uh, on this. Uh, DOI stands for distinctness of image, measures clarity, gloss, uh, specular reflectance, things of that nature. That will tell us how good the paint is or what kind of uh, differences that we're gonna find before and after. Another thing we can't do a restorative level detail without is a good paint thickness gauge. Uh, with this, we can go around, especially since we know it's had some repaint work done on it, we can go around and we can take measurements and we can look for any dangerous spots. Dangerous spots could either be exceptionally thick paint or exceptionally thin paint. And we want to compare those repainted surfaces to the factory to see what kind of variances uh, uh, that we have in there. And finally, a good stripping agent like uh, Gion Prep here. That's what was used uh, beforehand to make sure everything is stripped off of it so that we have got a good base to work with. Okay, now that we've uh, kind of talked about uh, the game plan here, let's take a look at some of the specifics we're gonna be looking at uh, as we inspect the car, getting it ready for, uh, for paint polish. And I'll point out some of uh, the stuff that I am looking for and stuff that you, whether you're a DIY person or whether you're a professional detailer, some of the things that you should be looking for uh, as well and uh, why you should be looking for them. So. One of the first things we're going to do is go around and with our paint depth gauge and we're going to take some measurements and we'll talk about that yet uh, here in a little bit to let you know what we found. That gives me a good overview of, of what's been painted and what hasn't been painted. And the way I do that is I look for inconsistencies. So if this door is measuring around 100, 105, that door is measuring about the same and I go over to the other door and it's measuring in the 130s there's an inconsistency and I'm gonna start looking for, for other things in there. Um, additionally, I wanna take a look um, for things like compound in the cracks, staining on trim. 
And I am finding this quite a bit on this car. And what that is gonna tell me is it's gonna be somebody who has worked on this that maybe isn't uh, really good at working with a, uh, a polisher. And because of that, I know two things. One, I'm gonna have a lot of cleaning up in the cracks and crevices. Two, I need to be a lot more careful looking for edges and things because if they have done all the polishing and they have left compound behind, it's a good chance they've uh, thinned some edges at the same time. So that's a little bit of a warning sign for potentially other bigger problems on it. Uh, so I look at that. I'm going to look at the general condition of everything too. You know, is all my trim, is it secure? Um, last thing you want to mess with is something that, that's kind of flopping around and you have the risk of, uh, of causing any more damage while you're polishing it. Uh, as I'm looking at the paint, I'm looking at the general condition of the paint. What kind of defects uh, do we have in here? Are we talking heavy scratches? Are we talking regular swirls? Are we talking about uh, holograms from a rotary buffer? And we're gonna shoot a separate video on this specific car talking about those and how to, uh, to identify them. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at all those things across each panel. I'm looking around the door handle area. This door handle serves two purposes. One, opening the door. Two, closing the door. Only push right here, or you can push on the glass and wipe off uh, the glass. Most people are putting their hands right here on the door, shutting it, or they're using uh, the B pillar, and all that does is scratch it up. But that's a topic for, for another video. Uh, but as I look in here, I can find that it's been heavily worn over the years. I mean, this car's got 70,000 miles on it. I'm down here, I'm looking at the trim. This trim is a bit faded, so I'm, I know I'm gonna have to do some trim restoration on it. If I look in the back, I find where a buffer has gone right over the trim. Person didn't even bother to put some tape on it. So I've got uh, some heavy work to get that old compound out, and I have some trim restoration to do at the same time. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the B pillars here. B pillars are beat up pretty badly as I would expect. If people have been touching here to shut the door, they're grabbing here and shutting the door as well. We're gonna do a separate video just on how to polish this because you know, there's other videos out there, people talking about how much of a, a process is involved in it. It's not, I'm gonna show how easy it is to do this and how much of a difference uh, that it makes. As I go back uh, down through the car, once again, I'm looking at all these trim pieces. I'm seeing if I have any uh, damage to them, how much staining I have. That also tells me how much work I've got to do at the end uh, for my coating and my trim restoration on it. Uh, and as I look down here between the two panels, these doors are in far worse condition than the back is. And you can see a difference in color between the two. That's telling me somebody has polished on this uh, recently, so I wanna find out why. Is there another area that's been repainted? Has this been repainted and it was polished and, uh, and this uh, wasn't? So those are the different kind of things that I'm gonna be looking for in particular to find out uh, what level I'm gonna have to go uh, to. And I'm gonna do that same process around the entire car. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a few other areas of the car and we're gonna look at some problem areas that we have found and kind of discuss how that is going to affect our next steps. Okay, now around to the back of the vehicle, there's a couple things that uh, I wanted to point out. One thing that we found here is a BMW Roundel right there. Uh, uh, it, it's kind of coming off. You can't tape that up or anything. Uh, it's just going to have to be uh, replaced. Now back here on the deck lid, uh, something important that we found. We talked about, we went around here with a paint thickness gauge and we did all our measurements. When I got back to the trunk lid, I found it to be ridiculously thin. And when I say ridiculously thin, I mean it's in the mid 50s. The rest of the car is in that 100 to 110 range. Now, if you take a car that is 100 to 110, and even if you get down to some areas that are 80 and below, you know that you've got a danger zone right there and you can only go so far. About all you can do on that is a light polish at best. There's gonna be a lot of defects left uh, in this if we just do a one step. So we've got a couple of different options. We see if the customer wants to have that repainted, which he probably doesn't because he's already had some repaint work and this will throw the whole project uh, behind a couple of months. Or we can do a one step polish on it. We can cover it in paint protection film. Uh, particularly if we do some in the, uh, in the front, it'll just match things up in the back. You know, we use a very high quality paint protection film to where uh, you don't notice a difference between one area and the next. That way, it takes away any of the scratches uh, that are there. It still looks nice, deep black. 
and it's going to give uh, protection this thing being out in the, uh, in the sun. We know that it's lost a lot of its uh, UV protection being all the way down uh, into the 50s. So those are the kind of things that you want to really look for when you're taking measurements on a car. And if you don't have a paint thickness gauge and you go around and you just start doing heavy polishing or compounding on a car like this, you're going to run into some severe problems. Um, if you don't burn through while you're trying to compound it, there's a good chance it won't take that long if this car is outside uh, that you start getting clear coat failure, cracking, peeling, uh, fading. That's why you don't go in and sand um, OEM painted finishes uh, as well. So I wanted to point out that important safety um, uh, aspect of it uh, right here. Watch out for those things. Watch out for an area that's really, really thin in particular and adjust your uh, um, process uh, accordingly. And moving on to the side of the cars, a couple things over here that I wanted to, to point out that stood out to, to me as I was doing my initial inspection. First of all, taking measurements, this door measured out of the range that all the other four doors. We talked about that was in that 100, 105 range. This door is in about the 130 range. So that was the first thing I noticed. Then when I started taking a look at it a little bit closer, I noticed there's a lot of compound here in the cracks. Why did uh, this get polished and not the other areas of it? This door up here has not uh, been polished. Then I look up in here and I notice a lot of overspray from a clear coat. So that told me right there, this door in particular has been repainted. I look at the adjacent panels and they were uh, running the average thicknesses as the rest of the car. This one was out of range. Also, when you look at this, when I look at it in the inspection light, is here I've got holograms versus regular swirls. Once again, the other video that we're gonna do about uh, how to identify specific ones, I'll show you up close the difference between regular swirls and holograms. So those things are what I notice on this side, the same as uh, the rest of it with compound in different places and, and some trim not looking so good, the paint in a general rough condition. Typically speaking, you're gonna find the B pillar on the driver's door is gonna be the worst condition uh, out of anywhere. Drivers are in and out of it all the time. They're shutting the door uh, by grabbing here or grabbing here. So we know we're gonna have uh, the most work uh, in this area. And that's exactly uh, what I found. So now let's move on to the front end of the car and look at some of the stuff that we found up there. Okay, now we're on to the front of the car. As you can tell, this is a bit of a, uh, a CSI type uh, scenario. When you're going over cars, you're really looking to find all of the history of it. So we really spend a lot of time looking at these cars to figure out what it's been through so we know how to best approach uh, our detail. Specifically when you're going to this level, if we were just doing a one step uh, on this car, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But since we're doing a restorative level detail, we have to look at far more details of uh, the vehicle to make sure that we're doing what's in the best interest of the car and what's in the best interest of uh, the customer at the same time. Now up here, like I talked about, this has been repainted. The hood has been repainted. The front bumper has been repainted. And when I'm looking it over, you know, first I'm gonna look at it uh, in our fluorescent lights. That's gonna give me a good idea of how flat uh, the paint is. Does it have a lot of texture in it? Does the, um, does the surface texture match the rest of the car? In this case, yes. I would call this a good paint job. Finishing, not so much, but that's typical what you're gonna find uh, out of uh, body shops. Body shops are painters, detailers are finishers. Um, so when you have work done on a car like this, it's best to go see a detailer afterwards because there's a lot of cleanup work that, uh, that needs to happen. Uh, but here, as I'm looking at the paint, I'm looking at the surface and, and I'm seeing a lot of rotary holograms uh, that I get, expect uh, to see. So I know that I'm gonna have to go probably a little bit heavier on this because it was probably an old dirty wool pad um, that, that just makes deep uh, uh, defects into the paint that requires a lot of uh, work to get that out. I'm also gonna be looking at all the edges. I know there's a bit of compound. You're gonna know, lift up the hood. You're gonna have to clean all that stuff out from your adjacent panels uh, at the same time. Um, probably we'll go in, we'll remove uh, it, it, at least the, uh, the windshield washer so we can get up close to the uh, edges of it. Uh, also, as I look up here, I look at the, the windshield wipers. I notice the plastic is all faded out. We've got some trim restoration to do in there. I'm not talking about uh, throwing uh, some kind of dressing on it, but an actual restoration type product that's gonna turn it back to black and it's gonna stay that way for a long period of time. 
very easy to do and much, much cheaper than going and getting uh, replacement parts out of it. And then around the bumper, since I know that that's been off, it's been repainted, I wanna take a look at all of the trim, make sure everything fits tight uh, on there so we don't run into any kind of problems uh, when we're doing uh, polishing. So yes, we've spent a lot of time going over this car. We still have another video to shoot to take a look at some of the specific defects in how to uh, identify what is what and what that means as you're uh, figuring out your approach uh, in the polishing aspect. So like I said, whether you're a do-it-yourselfer at home on the weekends, working on your own cars, uh, your part-time detailer, full-time detailer, a lot of information in here that you can use when you're going to work on cars to determine uh, what level. That's why on a job like this, you just don't quote over the phone of how much it's gonna be. You have to bring the car in, you have to thoroughly inspect it, you have to have the right kind of tools for the job uh, to be able to determine, are there any dangerous areas? For instance, you know the money we invested years ago in paint thickness gauge, it pays off when we see a car like this, find the trunk lid uh, in, in such a thin condition because we don't want to go aggressive uh, in those areas. So hopefully now you have a better uh, appreciation for what goes into uh, inspecting a car um, as you prepare for paint correction. If you have any more questions uh, about uh, this car or others in particular, leave it down in our comment box. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're constantly updating with new videos on detailing tips, tools, and techniques. That's about all for today. For Esoteric Car Care, I'm Todd Cooperrider. Thanks. We'll see you again next time.